Hey everyone, this is our weekly podcast where we go over hot topics in the NFL as well as fantasy. We are the Football Telegators. With me today, I have Yams, a Jets fan, Andy, our unbiased NFL fan, and myself, Aaron, a Cowboys fan. And we got a multitude of topics again. We got some Tyreek Hill drama. We got Antonio Brown speaking out about his surprising exit in the NFL. We got also a little bit of the Jets. We also got some Dalvin Cook rumors some Dolphins talk and NFC West rankings. So let's start off with the sort of viral clip that's going around with Antonio Brown explaining his exit on the Buccaneers versus Jets game. That went absolutely viral. And I want to get your guys' thoughts on Antonio Brown blaming Bruce Arians for his exit on that uh, Jets versus Buccaneers game. Antonio Brown blames everyone but himself, but I would blame eagerness in this case for the downfall of the Bucks that year, because if he just worked with him, they probably would have won the Super Bowl. Yeah, I agree 100% that they would probably go to the Super Bowl and win it. Antonio Brown is still a huge talent as a wide receiver in the NFL. I kind of understand at his point that he was injured and he didn't want to play and prepare himself for the playoffs to get to that Super Bowl run. But, I mean, at the end of the day, Bruce Arians is the head coach, and it's his decision goes. But I do understand Antonio Brown. It's You can't deny his talent. Antonio Brown is very talented, right? But he's the type of player where he puts himself over everyone else, and he wants to make sure he gets his way. And he's very passionate about that, and you can clearly see that in the clip, right? And it's kind of like just how Bruce Arians kind of explained it, what went down. And he was forced to play, right? And he just, they just, they were just clashing. So it is what it is at the end of the day. You know, he's he's probably not going to find a team anymore. He, he seems to be done, even though I think maybe he's mentioned to come back. He remember. has mentioned to come back, but he has so much drama behind him. I believe he became an owner for an indoor football team. And they're, the other owners are now looking to kick him out. Uh, I believe there's players and staff that are saying that Antonio Brown is not paying them. So it's just a huge mess. And then him coming to a podcast and just talk about something that happened two seasons ago, which, I mean, you do in a podcast, right? But him still blaming and uh, Bruce Arians. He also blamed uh, Tom Brady a bit, too, because he said that Tom Brady was calling him up, preparing him for that Jets game and telling him that he's going to throw him a lot of football's his way that's going to be a big game and then Antonio Brown was like you know what okay if you're going to be throwing me a lot of a lot of those balls I'll I'll go and do it but then he's like contradicting himself because he didn't want to play because of the injury there's a lot of stuff that we just are not going to know because Bruce Arians and Tom Brady are the type of people that are not going to say their their opinions about this the case they just moved on but Antonio Brown he of course he's not going to move on it's going to be a little murky because Yo, we'll get his perspective, which is what just kind of happened. And then we'll get a professional perspective from people still in the league, right? So it's not until one of them are completely out, they're not interested in coming back to the NFL to where maybe they can spill the truth of exactly what happened and everything. But it seems to be that there's not much to it other than, you know, they were just, they were not clicking together. And he just gave up. He's, he was over it. He wasn't going to take their crap. So. I think, the, tough. I think the moment he left the field and left Tom Brady, that was his last chance, like his last chance in the NFL. He burned his bridge there with the Raiders when he complained about the helmet, when he came, burned his feet or ice burn. And the only one that tolerated him was Tom Brady and Bruce Arian for one year, just one year. And once he decided to leave in the middle of the game, that was it. You forgot about the Patriots. He wasn't with the Patriots like for a couple of weeks and then he started to go... Oh, he yeah. did some off-field issues, and they fired yeah. him right there. It was only then. a week, right? Was, yeah, he only played one game. Again, big-time talent, did score a touchdown, everything, but he got fired. Tom Brady? Within the Patriots, yeah. Was that with Tom Brady? That was with Tom Brady, exactly. And Tom Brady, since he ha- did have a good rapport with him, I mean, what we know, because we're just fans, right? We just read articles, and things have happened. And Tom Brady invited him to his house, try to, like, help him out and just... Just play football, right? And just get your career back on track. And just because of his personality of Antonio Brown, he can help himself. I do believe there's some CTE involved there. Um, since he had that big time <laughs> yeah. blow into Sadly. his head. Yeah, in, in the Pittsburgh it's Steelers really game. It was a really big time blow. But since then, 
I don't know how CTE works if it's if how long it takes time to develop, but since then it's just his personality has like big time change. Yeah. I don't know what's going on with him. If he's still having issues to this day, you know, there's there's got to be something going on in there. Yeah, no, ex- <laughs> yeah, yeah. And, and it was with like, against the Cincinnati Bengals. I don't know why Pittsburgh and Cincinnati Bengals when they play each other, it's like brutal. Horrible like, hard, things. Yeah, happen. hardcore hits. I mean, uh, Shazir, his his career was over uh, with his with that big time hit that he had with his, I believe it was his his back and all his like he got sort of paralyzed. Now he's yeah, walking, paralyzed. but I, yeah, no, there's been big time, uh, big time injuries between those two teams when they play each other. Uh, it's unfortunate, but with Antonio Brown. It's, he's just going to be a headline without playing sports if he it's, just keeps this up. Much. Yeah, he's too much of a diva. There's too much ego. That's just not. It's just not going to work with with Antonio Brown in any NFL team. I don't believe. I feel bad for the guy, but I mean, unless he uh, he needs to seek help, and at whenever that is, hopefully he can come back to the league because he is still. If he comes back, I would still maybe put him into the, the top five wide receivers because he's that big time of a talent that's hard to see because it's been years since he hasn't played but i think i do believe that he's a, still a big time talent so someone else who was in that podcast too tyree kill he's in a little bit of drama as well and he's got a little bit of a spicy personality too he likes to talk a lot and he seems to be recently involved in a scenario to where he is facing assault charges for slapping a 57 year old man on the back of the head on a boat incident. I don't know if you want to go over that a little bit, Andy, on the details. Yeah, apparently uh, Terry Kale and some friends of his, they went in, t- uh, in, s- in a pier on a boat that wasn't theirs, just a stranger's boat. And when somebody called them out, Tyree Kill just started yelling, saying, like, he can buy the boat and he can buy many, many other boats around the pier or something like that. And there was some argument discussions and just Tyree Kill just slapped the back of this 57 year old man's head. And now he's pressing charges on him. Boneheaded move on Tyree Kill. I mean, come on, you're an NFL player. You see a whole bunch of examples and now you're in trouble. So we'll see how that works out. Yeah, here's another example of another eagleness that's ha- happening. You know, it's sad because they have all this experience. They have everything that they can ever, ever want, but they seem to be, you know, they can't keep themselves out of trouble. Just just avoid, just leave the boat, just walk, just walk away. That's it. You know, when players come from the NF- from the college to the NFL, there's like a, um, a meeting a, just to like an introduction of past players to tell them like, hey, have a fall guy if you're going to go out and something happens so he can take the blame. There's like some things that you do strategically so you don't take the blame of it and it just affect your career. And it seems like a lot of these players just forget or they're just in the moment. But I mean, you got to be real, real smart because you just look dumb at this point. I mean, you have a lot of money and you're not protecting yourself. We see a lot of players that do the correct things, right? But we just see these these um, exceptions like Antonio Brown and now with Tyreek Hill that just do these boneheaded moves off, off, off the field. And now you're just creating trouble for yourself. You can kind of get into a complicated talk on about his suspension because he is on that on that talk to where he can get suspended. How many games? I don't know. There's the complete. This is where we talked about last year, actually, I think around the same time, too. Mm -hmm when we're going over the Deshaun Watson talk and he only got a 10 game suspension. So what is this guy going to get? Like what you got the whole Josh Gordon scenario too, with the whole uh, weed thing and his, his suspension. So we won't really know. I think, Uh, I don't think it'll be anything too harsh at all, of course, but it's definitely something that I think they need to give Tyree kill a wake up call. Because this so, is the yeah, this is a, the ultimate team sport. You're not only affecting yourself; you're affecting the Miami Dolphins. They're trying to win the division. You're a big part of that offense. Tua needs you to be that fast, elusive wide receiver that you are. And now you're going to be missing some games, maybe. And also, again, I can also put in the fantasy football since we all play fantasy. And now you're like uh, second guessing yourself about. When are you going to be drafting Terry Kill if he's going to be into trouble? So it messes things up a bit. Yeah, well, yeah. I mean, that's a whole other thing too. It, compli- it really complicates. Selfishly, it. But, I'm looking. Selfishly, I'm looking at that. Yeah, very. Yeah. 
so he's unofficially under investigation uh as as of like five hours ago it was stated on the cbs report that he's unofficially under investigation so and there's no official statement uh on behalf of the league so we have to kind of see about that it's still developing still kind of early well, before you move on, I don't remember, I don't know if you guys remember if Devonta Adams got any type of suspension when he actually pushed that uh, oh. videographer, photographer, because the, just this week, the, the, that claim, it was dismissed by the judge, like it was just dropped. So I don't, if, if Devonta Adams didn't get any suspension, because I don't, I really don't remember if, if he did or, or he didn't, because if he didn't, then it can be the exact same case in this situation, just I don't know, probably Terry Hill may pay this guy off and it just gets dismissed, but it did become a headline. He still can get disciplined by the NFL, but if it gets dismissed, I, I, he might not even be suspended. I don't know. It's fine. Just don't put yourself in those situations. That's just plain and simple. What do you think is worse? The, the shove to the cameraman to where he fell to the ground or the smack the behind the head of a 57-year-old man on a boat? Smack because he was on a boat that wasn't his and he knew it. Yeah. And Devonte had him in the heat of the moment he, after he, a sucky game. Yeah. He got in his way. He got it, in his way and he was, you know, emotional intelligence at that point, right? right. But it's, I totally Devonte Adams just looked worse because everybody saw it on national TV. <laughs> yeah, there's going to be a bigger spotlight on Devonte Adams because of being, yeah, exactly, on TV compared to Terry Kill, which is kind of sad. It kind of sucks because. Like you said, Yams, it's kind of, I think it, it's worse, the scenario that Tyree Kill is in. I think at the end of the day, they're probably just going to get a slap on their wrist with a, a penalty, maybe making them pay up some handful of money or something. I don't think, I don't think it'll be a game suspension or two. So let's move on with the Jets. We got Hard Knocks. Absolutely great show by HBO. But there is a little bit of drama again with the Jets involuntary there it's it's you know it's kind of complicated because it seems like teams right now not only just the jets so it's the jets browns saints lions they don't want to be on hard knocks but there is a rule in the nfl that says that they cannot be forced but also it gets kind of complicated because at the end of the day someone has to be on there so what are your guys thoughts on that i mean it'd be awesome the jets are the absolute perfect fit for the for hard knocks because of the personalities they have. They have Sauce Gardner. Now you have Aaron Rodgers. You have Garrett Wilson. It's just new storylines with the Jets. It's just new expectations. Just do it. As a fan, I love to see Hard Knocks and see a team and what goes behind the, the scenes and through training camp just for the team to get prepared. But if I was part of the team as a player, or as a coach, I wouldn't want Hard Knocks to be part of it. I, I want for everybody to be focused. Don't worry about the cameras. We're here to win a Super Bowl and just focus every single moment in training camp to get to that point. That I think I definitely agree with Andy's point here. It's it's a distraction, and I think that's exactly why teams don't want cameramen all over the place, right? Because they already deal with their own cameramen on their own team because, right, you got their own social media team for the team on, like, Twitter, blah, 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 whatever, and they do their own little videos, too. So you're just adding on to it. So it's a, a lot more pressure on the players and the staff to have to deal with an extra, I, I guess, thing on the side that, you know, it's a big deal. HBO really goes all out on these shows, and you get a lot of good behind-the-scenes stuff. And that's why it's such a great show because you get to see a lot of stuff that is not – you don't see it usually. So – not it's only a great th thing. Yeah, not only that, but also there is a type of a Madden curse. There's also a Hard Knocks curse that after a team is part of Hard Knocks, they don't have such a good year the following year. I just, I, you can say that the Detroit Lions actually are better than can't the years really prior. Say much yeah, about that. But you can't really say much about it because we didn't see them. We didn't see them go to the Super, the Super Bowl or, play, or big time playoffs or whatever. So it. It is a distraction. I it, agree with you. You said it's it's the year after. Yeah. It's been, uh, oh, okay. Well, everyone's banking on the Jets going to the Super Bowl this year. No, no, no. I'm saying that season. Oh, that same season. That same season. Yeah, that same season. Yeah, it's just like a Madden curse. The, Mad the Madden game comes out. You haven't, haven't heard I haven't that observed same them. season. I haven't. If what you, about the Cowboys that year? What didn't they do pretty good? I mean, it's not a Super Bowl. I don't. So I don't think the the hard knocks curse oh, yeah. is something. It's not as a 
big of a deal as the Madden curse because the Madden curse, people get hurt, right? There's injuries that happen. There's setbacks that happen that I think are more significant than the hard knocks, in my opinion. And I don't think it's like an ultimate setback. I don't think it's insane, but it it is. It does get in the way. I think. You know, the end season, it could be more frustrating than the training camp. Oh, yeah. The Cardinals? I think just enough with the Cardinals. It was just a depressing show to watch. It was so, so bad. Also, with the the Colts, like, they're all depressed. You just feel, like, horrible for them. And it's just really, yeah, it it is a negative show. But the Lions won. The Lions, they're not a good team. And you saw, like, they, they were... They they were, I guess, not acting, but they were seeming like they were going to be a really good team. The way they were putting the effort and all that kind of stuff, especially with Jamal Williams. He, I think he was a star in that show. Right, for sure. He stuck out, right? So you, you kind of rooted for them. And for the Cardinals, it was just kind of like, wow, I'm, I'm watching a disaster just unfold right in front of my eyes. What is this? This is crazy. And nobody it, likes yeah nobody likes it. anybody on the cardinals i don't think so no even the football players don't like yeah. the cardinals they like vote them like the worst team yeah. to play <laughs> it's tough and that's why jj watt retired and deandre hopkins is out and so, also buddha baker is also and buddha baker out. as well right tough team tough team what about all right so we're gonna talk about dalvin cook now and the jets as well so there's a rumor that dalvin cook is heading to the jets what do you guys think absolutely he Definitely should go to the Jets. I am a firm believer that after a player gets injured for two um, for an ACL injury, it takes two years for them to fully come back, recover. Uh, with knee injuries or or foot injuries, especially on running backs, they do need time to recover. We saw the ACL with with Saquon Barkley. We also saw uh, Christian McCaffrey having some issues with with his legs. So it took two years for them to come back. So uh, Brees Hall, even though he was a monster when he started last season. They do need some help this season because he's not going to probably not going to come into play until middle of the season. So definitely Dalvin Cook go to the Jets. I do think we do need to help. I don't think Brees Hall can handle the whole load on him on himself. And I don't think the running backs that we have now, Ty Johnson and Carter, would carry the team. So, yes, add Dalvin Cook, Zeke Elliott, somebody. It's as long as they don't give up too much money. I think it's completely safe and understandable move because exactly Brees Hall, I don't think can really pull the load here. I don't think he's capable of being the same as he was before his injury with the ACL. It's going to be an issue that they have to figure out. And I definitely do think that Dalvin Cook is better than Ezekiel Elliott. And as for the other running backs, it's a little bit murky, but I think the clear clear favorite here is Dalvin Cook, and the Jets should take advantage of it because they're going all in. This is it. Because I think they got max two years for a Super Bowl run, which is very weird because usually if you're trying to go for a run, they last a little bit longer. But you got a unique scenario with the Jets to where they got a, a lot of promising rookies here developing and turning great, right? But you got a star aging quarterback here that's almost out of there. So you got to already worry about patching it together after only two years. It'll it'll be very interesting. So they need to take advantage of maybe striking a deal with Dalvin Cook for two years. It's a definitely a Tom Brady type of situation when he went to the Buccaneers. I believe Tom Brady was 40 when he went to the Buccaneers and or 41. Was it three, yeah. Three years? Something like that. And Aaron Rodgers is 39 and it. It took, I mean, the first in the first year, Tom Brady did win the Super Bowl. Well, kudos to him. And I believe the second one, the second year, he definitely would have won the Super Bowl if Antonio Brown continued playing there. And unfortunately, it just didn't happen. But here with the Jets, I, I'm absolutely, I'm completely 100% agree with both of you guys that they need Dalvin Cook in there or Kareem Hunt. You just need a more depth in the backfield just to figure things yeah. out, more weapons. Yeah. Uh, Aaron Rodgers loves to to do those uh, checkdowns to the to the running backs. That's why you always saw Aaron Jones like have a tremendous year with Aaron Rodgers. Uh, I can remember Lacey, Stark. Oh, Eddie, uh, La- Eddie Lacey? No way. Yeah, they, he would always yeah. chuck it down to these running backs. He would always yep. have big stellar running Eddie backs. Eddie Lacey got let go. Throw. I know he got let go to replace him with a better running back, but what I'm saying is that they do get good um, yardage and they do take a lot from the running backs because Aaron Rodgers loves to check down the ball. I think the Jets need to focus on re-signing Quinn and Williams, 
then get your running back. They haven't signed him, and it's getting me a little worried. <laughs> so you got Zeke Elliott, Dalvin Cook, Leonard Fournette, Kareem Hunt, J.D. McKissick, Mark Ingram. It kind of starts to dwindle down a little bit, the quality. I think really, if you're trying to focus on getting a quality running back, it's going to have to be Zeke, Dalvin, Leonard, and Kareem. And after that, you're just kind of... Yeah, and I would go Dalvin. Signing the same person you already have, basically. Yeah, yeah. Dalvin, then it's Kareem for me, then Zeke, and oh. and then Fournette. No, 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 no. Yeah, I agree Dalvin, with that. then Zeke. Kareem Hunt? No, I said Dalvin I, first. Right. Then Kareem Hunt. Yeah, no. I and then Zeke. Totally disagree. But and okay. then Leonard. No. <laughs> I think Kareem Hunt has provided really good value mm. to Cleveland. And again, this is to take off the load with Brees Hall. This is not to dominate the running back position right. as a number one. This is to take the load off Brees Hall. And I think Kareem Hunt is a great compliment. I think you get more bang for your buck with Kareem Hunt because I'm almost certain he's going to take less than Dalvin Cook. For sure, 100%. And when Brees Hall comes back and Dalvin Cook, if I don't know Brees Hall's personality, but Dalvin Cook is going to be the, probably the starter th- from the whole season. And they're just going to be really careful with Brees Hall and using those two. Well, that's that's if they determine that. I mean, they might just start Brees Hall, but yeah. we don't know. We don't know. We don't know. I mean, we're just thinking money wise. I mean, if you're going to be yeah, investing yeah, exactly. a lot in the Dalvin Cook, you might then it doesn't make him. sense. Yeah. So all, yeah. all the running backs we mentioned, they're all 27 years old. If the Jets get Dalvin Except Cook, for Leonard Fournette. Yeah, no, not, no, he's not allowed. <laughs> if the, if the Jets get da, da, uh, Dalvin Cook, then that tells me the Jets know that Brees Hall is not going to be too much fe- featured this year. Mm-hmm. I just for fantasy people, just mm-hmm. be careful there because that would tell me that Brees Hall is not going to be too much into the game plan for the Jets. I think, you sh- yeah, you should definitely be nervous if Dalvin Cook gets signed for Brees Hall. But I think you you would still have a little bit of hope with Kareem Hunt, maybe. Let's see how it plays out. I don't know. I don't think they'll get him, but we'll see. All right, switching on to the Dolphins now in the AFC East. We got a question here for you guys. Can Tua win the AFC East? Can he carry the Dolphins to number one in AFC East? Can he win the division for the Dolphins? Absolutely not. Zero percent. Even if he stays healthy. <laughs> okay, Jets fan. I... Th- I don't think so either, and it's just because of his health. I haven't seen him play a full season healthy-wise uh, and being healthy, so I don't see it until I see that he can last a whole season. Then I will. Then that will change my mind. But for now, unless the Miami Dolphins put in a game plan for him to throw the ball quickly, just really quickly, do some checkdowns and just throw really quick slants to Tyreek Hill or to Waddle, then maybe something can happen like that. But they got to really protect this quarterback because it seems like every single game you're just like kind of hoping for him not to get injured every single time that he gets hit. So they dominated the air game last season. And with Tua's struggles, they finished 9-8, and eight, second place behind the 13-3 and three Bills. If Tua is fully healthy and he's able to perform for the whole season, I think they're capable of being first place. And it's going to be fun to watch AFC East in general because it's going to be such a close race unless something happens to some teams because, it's again, it's the NFL. Anything could happen. We could maybe see the Bills finish maybe 9-8, and eight, right? Something crazy. Or we can see them, again, repeating the same thing as last year. Or we can see, again, something new with the Jets being first place after a good while. So the Dolphins being able to be first with Tua – If he stays healthy, he totally can. It's not out of the question at all. What's the likelihood? Probably not as likely as the Bills or Jets. So I think that's kind of how I would put it. I saw uh, Pro Football Talk share a tweet on um, the most dynamic wide receivers in in the league. And Bills were listed. And Miami was in it. I agree with Miami. They have Terry Kill. They have Wilson. They have the Waddle. That definitely could be... What's your problem with Josh Allen? No, no, no. I said dynamic wide receiver group. <laughs> he only has Stefan Diggs, who's disgruntled right now. Can you tell me another one? Well, he puts him into a really high Maybe level. even DeAndre Hopkins. Maybe. maybe uh, wait, maybe. hold on. Let's, let's put a pause on that. Mm-hmm. But it's just Stefan Diggs. Anyways, but my, Miami does have a very dynamic wide receiver group. They just need a quarterback. I think you're kind of discrediting the Bills. 
I think the Bills are strong enough to to compete in that scene. So it's it's tough because again, I think the better roster overall right now in that AFC East division. I don't think it's so obviously if we're just talking about quarterback, that's where it gets really complicated. But I think at the end of the day, because of overall, I think it maybe it would be Josh Allen fully healthy. But when you're talking about the team as a whole, it's really between the Dolphins and Jets, mainly because of the roster. Right. Again, I don't think the Bills are doing their best to help Josh Allen here. And that's why I'm saying it's really important because it's going to f- completely flip everything if DeAndre Hopkins is with the Bills. But as of now, I think that Dolphins definitely do have a strong run here if everything goes well in a perfect world, which, again, it's not a perfect world, so the likelihood of them being first, it's tough. I don't think they'll make it at the end of the day. They'll probably finish second or third, but not by much. Second or third? Yes. Not third and fourth? No, no. Patriots are 1,000% going to be last. And they're, yeah, they're gonna they're gonna end up last, and they're probably gonna end with like a I don't know seven and ten, hmm. or maybe I think they're gonna be below five hundred. The Patriots, one hundred percent. That's what I'm putting there. Perhaps. So that's it's, what I'm saying. Yeah. Right there, it's the one and three where it gets really complicated because any single little like movement could flip the whole thing. It's just so close that whatever happens, Aaron Rodgers goes down, Josh Allen goes down, Tua goes down, Tyreek Hill is out. It's a problem. That's a setback, and those setbacks are going to be very costly in this division. So that, that's my thoughts. Let's go into the NFC rankings now. NFC West, my bad. N- NFC West rankings here. we got the Cardinals, Rams, and 49ers with the Seahawks as well. Andy, what are your rankings on the NFC West? Yeah, rankings for the NFC West. <laughs> I'm sorry. The rankings for the NFC West for the 2023 season, I have the 49ers in first place. Uh, they did go to the NFC Championship. If Purdy didn't get hurt, they might have gone to the Super Bowl, maybe even win it. Uh, second place, I have the Rams. Matthew Stafford, he's back. He did have some injuries with his elbow, and but he still did just win a Super Bowl two seasons ago. He still has Cooper Cup, one of the most dynamic wide receivers in the league, probably top three. Then I have the Seahawks. Pete Carroll is building that team. That defense is coming back. And Geno Smith didn't do a bad job. And he does have DK Metcalf. He does have uh, Walker as a running back. Lockett's still there. It's still a pretty good team. I have him in third place. In fourth place, I don't. nobody should be surprised. It's the Cardinals. Dysfunction team, uh, new head coach, team uh, players are wanting to move away. And Kyler Murray, we don't know what's going to happen to him. I agree with your fourth place. That's for sure. The San Francisco 49ers being one, I don't know, because D'Amico Ryan's just left. So they have a new defensive coordinator. I don't know how it's going to mesh. I don't know the quarterback situation right now. I would probably flip that to the Rams. I think... So, wait, you put... So you put 49ers, right? Mm -hmm. And then you were saying Rams? Then second place Rams. Yeah, and then Seahawks and then Cardinals. Correct. You know... The Rams are such a wild card that I think they can completely do a 180 from what happened last season, which was uh, completely, oh man, I feel, it's, it was bad. It was bad. 5-12 and 12 is bad. Yeah, well, But they could completely flip it over because they had problems. That's what it was. There was a lot of setbacks for them. So now, again, if everything goes well, or most of the things goes well, they could compete for first place here. And Seahawks are going to be probably somewhere around nine and eight maybe and i could totally see them actually going double digits with the wins here but i think the clear number one or the last place is is cardinals for sure i it's going to be really interesting what we see with seahawks and rams though well it's because with the rams i i do still believe that matthew stafford is still a really good quarterback and uh, they have a really good coach with sean McVay. he does put in really he does have a really good plan against uh whoever he plays against and he has gone to the Super Bowl twice and won one of them and the first one was with Jared Goff and I do see a running back problem here they're still betting on Cam Akers to be the guy just because in the last few games of last season he did play pretty well but that doesn't mean in my opinion for that to continue to the next season they still have Sony you Michel. Know, they they said that they they've said they they want to give him the ball more they want to focus on him more right so I'm. That's a question mark for me. The running back, Cooper Cup. He did get injured, but he's still probably Chase. 
Jefferson and then Cooper Cup. And you can even put Devontae Adams in there. But Devontae Adams, I don't know about his quarterback. Now we, and then, well, they have Van Jefferson, eh, C type of wide receiver. Uh, Tyler Higby, he's a decent tight end. And then the defense, let's talk about the defense. They have Aaron Donald still, like, destroying that defensive line. So it's still a, a, a really good team. And the Seahawks are still building that team. It's, uh, Geno Smith, even though he did a good job, we'll see if he can continue with with having that success. Uh, DK Metcalf, I do believe he's a top 10 wide receiver. And that defense is uh, is just little by little being built. I do see them getting better this season. And Arizona, well, you guys know my opinion on them. <laughs> yeah, Arizona's in a complete... They need to rebuild. And um, this might be... The last season for Calamari with Arizona, but I I just don't I just can't give the number one to to forty nine ers It's just there's it's, too many questions. No, there. they still have Shanahan there as the head coach, and he does pick good Correct. defensive coordinators. I mean, look at the defensive coordinator. I mean, the head coach of the Jets. Who is it? Robert Salak. Who was he? The defensive coordinator of the Forty ers and now we um the defensive coordinator that they had. Now he's the head coach of the Houston Texans, so we'll see. I, they still have really good pieces on the, def- and the defensive side. It's a, whole de- uh, it's a whole scheme that Shanahan has, and I do... Get- they almost went to the, to the Super Bowl. I mean, and that's with Brock Purdy. Why wouldn't but I put a- him at first place? Okay, so the defensive coordinator is Steve Wilkes. Now, do you guys... Have you guys heard of him? On, on what team? For the 49ers. No, it doesn't ring the bell. I've heard he used of him, to but work. Just, he used to yeah. work under Kubiak. Well, anyways, we don't know anything about him. That's right. the thing. So we don't know how the de- defense is going to be. Yeah, Demico Ryan's. It's a little bit tough. It's hard to find a, a a defensive coordinator and to get it right on the money. And he got it with Demico Ryan's. Is there a chance that he gets it again right on his third chance? I mean, yeah, Robert Salah came and go, and then you have Demico Ryan's came and left. But is he going to get it th- right the third time? Why not? Well, uh, we'll see. Nah. And then there's quarterback situations. You know, you have Purdy who not might show up in the first week of the season. You have Darnold there. You have, um, what's the other guy that gets injured? <laughs> Trey Lance. Trey Lance. Trey Lance. And they're saying, hey, you know what? There's not really a clear competition that could take over Purdy's position. So that's also kind of murky. Yeah. Well, it tells me a lot that they also went to get Sam Darnold. That means that they're Shanahan... They're going to miss Garoppolo 1,000%. I'm sorry. They're going to miss Garoppolo? <laughs> yeah, for 1, sure. 1,000%. But if Shanahan went to get Sam Darnold pretty early when free agency start, that tells me that he really likes that quarterback. So he does see something there on on Sam Darnold, and maybe he'll surprise us with the game plan that I, the 49ers put. I know the fact that he will surprise everybody, but <laughs> he he probably knew that Brady wasn't going to be ready, and he probably already doesn't like what he sees in Trey Lance. No, I I think he can he's getting him as a insurance type of case. If Brock Purdy is not ready for the season because I mean he did injured his elbow and he did have surgery. Why get someone that's injury prone to be the insurance? It's well he is seeing somebody something there on Sam Darnold. I mean, Trey Lance, you know he's been getting injured every single season. So with Sam Darnold, he, he's, I mean, he's got three injured quarterbacks. <laughs> one of them has to, I mean, each one can like, okay, the month of September is Brock Purdy. The month of October is Sam Darnold. Hopefully, and, and then Trey Lance, November, hopefully one of these guys lasts a little longer. <laughs> You know, it would have been interesting to see if they would have tried to trade for a bigger quarterback star. Like, I think Dak Prescott would have been interesting. Oh. And how that would have went down. Derek Carr? No, with the 49ers. Yeah, maybe Derek Carr could have gone there. I think they should have given everything to Tom Brady, and I think the Ugh. 49ers would have won the Super Bowl with Tom Brady in there with that massive team. That team is ready. They have everything. Wide receivers, defense, running back. It's ready to go. They just need a quarterback. So it's interesting why they're not being more desperate. He doesn't like to overspend on his quarterback. Maybe, yeah. Because if we're going out getting Sam Darnold, no offense again, but like, I know you're a Sam Darnold fan, Yams, but if we're getting Sam Darnold... It's not super exciting. It's, it's not it's super exciting, exciting, and you need to reevaluate yourself. <laughs> I'll tell you something. something. I, the preseason, I am going to watch some 49ers game and see what's going on with what's the quarterbacks. On? Yeah, they have three quarterbacks. And I'm yeah. sure Brock Purdy probably is not going to be playing in the in the first season, maybe in the last one, if he's ready to go. But we're going to see the other quarterbacks playing. It really helps if you're really into fantasy to 
to act as your own scout at that time and watch the preseason games. <laughs> yeah. So, I, I, I recommend watching preseason games just to see. Get your fantasy team ready. Well, I know you're going to be watching the Jets preseason games of Zach Wilson to see if he has learned something Ooh. behind Aaron Rodgers. Ooh. Yeah. He's, he's going to be the same Zach Wilson. <laughs> they need to move on from that guy. No. Uh... <laughs> I think it's it's right now this is the perfect opportunity to move on from him and and quickly find a replacement. What if he shows up Rogers in the gone. preseason? What if he's like making some big time he's plays? Not. <laughs> he's not. Also, it's the preseason. It was, it, didn't he get that. hurt in a preseason game last yes. year? Yes. Yeah, the, his knee. His knee. Jeez, man. Because he went for what was it? He was running out of the pocket and then what was he? He wanted to some, he do tried, some magic, yeah. like, right? Juke right, he, or something like he, that. He did like a little juke to like try to avoid a defensive end. And he went, ah, oh, my knee, and then he fell down. The starting quarterback, and, even that's but a that was that was right after he threw that interception, right? So he yeah. felt like he had to do something yeah. to make it up, and boom. That tells me that there's no leadership guiding the kid. Same thing with happened with Sam Darnold with the yeah, Jets. That there wasn't dangerous. any leadership of like saying, "What the hell are you doing?" Well, you had the what the hell is. <laughs> um what's his name joe 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 huh? good old joe joe flacco yeah, joe flacco joe, joe burrow oh joe flacco oh what? everybody Flacco's knows joe flacco what is he doing little, there little... why did you hire him he's supposed to be their mentor well no it's not happy maybe he does talk to him little by little but there's you don't see that demeanor on him like tom brady has or i i, I mean i don't want to say on the other quarterbacks but there, you can totally see that there are some quarterbacks to quarterbacks that are just really into the game and they're really going to be teaching. And I don't see that from Joe Flacco. Or I didn't see that also from the offensive coordinator. I don't think the offensive coordinator, LaFleur, also knew how to deal with this type of situation. Hackett, that's still a question mark. I mean, he has Aaron Rodgers as his quarterback. It makes your job a lot easier. So we'll see how Aaron Rodgers is with this quarterback. Well, there's He's a... not a... What I hear is that Aaron Rodgers yeah. in Green Bay is not like the best mentor, too. Well, you know, for... Aside from the Jets, like just the fantasy thing, it's just it's interesting because it helps you with. I mean, watching um preseason games, you you want to see how Jameer Gibbs um plays. So you want to see how um yeah. the other running back that got drafted to was it the Hawks. B. John Robinson. The Hawks. No, I think the Falcons. I'm, I'm confusing my sports now. <laughs> the Falcons. The Falcons. And you have your wide receivers, Jay Flowers. Um, you know, it just helps you out. Yeah, for sure. All right, that that's gonna be it. That's our time. Oh man, it's getting close. We are now a couple. Just like what is it? So training camp starts in July. End of July. I forgot. I forgot exactly what date. It's like the last week of but, July. Yeah. Right. Okay. Cool. So we're getting close. It's getting there. It's getting. There. The drought is almost over. Yeah, we have baseball going on, but like you know. No, the not month of July is always really hard because if you're not a baseball fan or a tennis fan, it's. It's really hard. You're just hoping for yeah. some UFC it's fights. Tough. Yeah, just for the weekend, I guess. So thank you guys for listening to the very end. And we'd love to see you guys giving your opinion with us on our social media, which is Football Tailgaters on YouTube. Football underscore Tailgaters, sorry. YouTube, Instagram, and TikTok. Thank you guys uh, again for listening. And we'll see you guys on the next episode.